Welcome to another Insider Special Report. It's Big 12 Picks time. I'm Jared Johnson. I'm joined by the mighty Joe Yeager. Once again, not so mighty last week, uh, Joe. Uh, bottom line is Double T Farmer finished even four and four, and then you, Zach, and I all went three and five. So that puts the season standings at Double T Farmer, Zach, and myself all tied at 15 and 12, and you at wah, wah, 13 and 14. So what do you have to say for yourself? Uh, oh, not much. <laughs> <laughs> I'm underwater, uh, and I'm not enjoying it too much. So we uh, we got to uh, get it together this week. I'm afraid I probably just jinxed myself by talking that smack there. So Because there's some tough games this week, uh, as you know, most of the teams get Big 12 play underway all Saturday here. Let's start with uh, actually a non-Big 12 game. Akron is 2-0, getting 19.5 points at Iowa State, who's 0-2 uh, at 11 a.m. That's on FSN. What do you think, Joe? Taking uh, the Cyclones here, uh, but uh, honestly, I'm not feeling <laughs> terribly confident about it. I mean, you know, Akron, uh, they got a nice win on the road against Northwestern Western last week. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Iowa State uh, improved. Uh, against Oklahoma in their second game of the season. You remember that first one was canceled. Uh, and, and then, so that was like their second game. Uh, and they did take a step up, I thought. But, uh, and, uh, you, know, you know, probably just enough to, to make me think that, that they can just cover that 19 points. Yeah, I'm going with Iowa State as well. They're hungry. They need a win. They're going to be very motivated. Akron's going to be feeling good about themselves coming after that, coming off that W. I think that's a, a recipe for a, for a pretty big win for the Cyclones there because I do think they're a good team. They're, they may be the best 0-2 team in the country, honestly, in my opinion. I mean, they played Iowa and Oklahoma. So, All right, Kansas State. It's two and one. They're getting 16 points on the road in Morgantown at number 12 West Virginia, who's two and zero. Oh. They had a, a bye week because of the, the canceled game against NC State due to Hurricane Florence. So that one's on uh, at 2:30 on ESPN. What do you think, Joe? Uh, taking uh, taking the underdog on this one. Uh, really? Yeah, I, I, I realize that's probably probably yeah. It's, that may not be a popular pick, but uh, I, yeah, I do think uh, uh, that they will get it together. You know, I'm, I'm still. Not 100% sold on Will Greer, and at least the way he's playing, and so far that I've seen him this year, he's kind of, kind of hit and miss. You know, a little yeah. bit inconsistent. Looks good at times, like the All-American candidate that everybody says he is. Other times, he looks very, very average. So, um, and Kansas State is a program that generally improves as the season goes along. Yeah, uh, that's true. You know, so yeah, I'm going to take the the Wildcats on this. One. I'm taking Kansas State as well, simply because of the points. I think West Virginia wins maybe by 10 points, but uh, not my. 17, basically. Oh, you're right. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. All right, Kansas, who is two and one. I repeat, mm -hmm. Kansas, who is two and one, is getting seven and a half points at Baylor, who is also two and one, coming off a loss against Duke. They got smoked actually by Duke. Uh, 2:30 p.m. That's on FSN as well. Oh man, I, hey, I'm taking uh, the Jayhawks. Really, dude? You're yeah, right. yeah, 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 man. I mean, uh, you know, maybe they got something up there a little bit. You know, I mean, obviously they had terrible performance uh, in week one, but since then, uh, they've, they've been like uh, covering every, you know, spread easily, you know, and um, again, now I know again, the opponents, again, the opponents and Rutgers, I, I understand that, but I mean, they kill Rutgers, they do, yeah. you know, and they, that is a, a big 10 team for what it's worth. Uh, and then Baylor just has not looked good at all, you know, and uh, I think maybe uh, those are programs moving a little bit in the opposite direction. Uh, and Matt Rule uh, may be in some trouble before too long. This is a tough one to me because I haven't really watched either one of them a whole lot. I'm not going to lie. I know Puka Williams is doing his thing for Kansas, uh, which that's fun to say, Puka. <laughs> uh, but seven, the idea of, uh, of seven and a half points is, oh, man, I don't know. I've gone back and forth, even all the way up. This is going to be a game time decision, and I still haven't made my decision. You know, I'm going to go with Baylor at home, even though they're giving up that many points. I just, I still can't believe in Kansas yet. I just can't bring myself. And maybe that will be my undoing this week, or one of my, uh, one of the reasons for my undoing this week. We'll see. So, because I, I certainly hope. So. I, yeah, I'm really nervous. If you can't tell about about these games this week. All right, uh, number 17 TCU, who's two and one, coming off a loss to Ohio State at Jerry World. They are giving up three points at Texas, which is crazy to think about. TCU, this is the times we're living in. TCU's given up three points to Texas in Austin, 3:30 p.m. on Fox. Yeah, I'm taking the Froggies on this one. Uh, I mean, I was I was impressed from what I saw of them against Ohio State. Yeah. I mean, they uh, put forth a, a better effort and hung with them better than than 
I thought they would. Uh, that was a game they could have won. I mean, there were some kind of weird, funky things that went against them and it kind of snowballed ball there at the end. Did uh, you see the turning point when Sean Robinson threw that uh, shovel pass uh, basically right to the defensive tackle? Yeah, yeah, For boy. For a pick six. <laughs> I know, I know. And uh, uh, who's the backup QB over there right now? Because, I, you they know. Got Collins, they got a dude from, he's a, I believe he's a, a graduate transfer from Ivy League school. I can't remember exactly where. But he actually looked pretty good in the offseason. So, yeah. yeah. You may see some of him. And then Texas, I consider the win over USC to be a little bit of a fluke. I'm just not sold on that program at all under Tom Herman. Uh, they, they just bounce around all over the place. And, uh, you know, I actually think TCU could cover this one by uh, a pretty wide margin. I'm going with TCU as well. I'm kind of nervous because you and I are agreeing on a lot of these. Uh, I don't know how you've done, how you done some. All right, Army, 2-1, and one, getting 31 and a half points at number five, Oklahoma, who's 3-0. and 6 p.m. on Fox Pay-Per-View, which I haven't seen before. It's kind of weird. Uh, so who, who are you taking there? Yeah, I think this is actually kind of an interesting game. Uh, and I'm taking Army. Uh, and, and the reason is that, I, first off, I, I was not impressed with Oklahoma's defense against Iowa State. They tackle very, very poorly. They were not physical at all. Uh, Army runs that option. They're going to kind of put them out there on the perimeter and force them to come up and tackle well. Uh, and I'm just not convinced that Oklahoma can do that. Uh, I think uh, Army's going to roll it down the field. They may not score all the time, but they're going to get some first downs and eat up that clock. And that's going to reduce the number of opportunities Oklahoma has on offense. And Army's defense has played reasonably well this year. Obviously, they haven't played anybody quite like Oklahoma, and they're going to give up some points. But I don't think uh, they're going to do enough with a relatively slow-paced game uh, to, to get that 31-plus point spread. So, yeah, I'm taking Army. I actually think there's going to be a lot of three downs. I think Oklahoma's going to work on – they're going to be working on tackling a lot. They're going to be – it's going to be drilled home to them. Yep. Guys who aren't willing to uh, step up and make those plays, they have backups who they can throw in there. It'll get the job done. Uh, I just I see this being just a landslide. Uh, I'm taking the Sooners. All right, Texas Tech, last but not least, two and one, getting 13 points. Last line I saw at number 15, Oklahoma State, who's 3-0, 6 p.m. in Stillwater on FS1. What do you think? Uh, pause for effect there. I don't know if you don't. Know. <laughs> right. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah. Thank very you, theatrical. Thank you. Thank you yeah. Yeah. Uh, pause. <laughs> Nobody uh, I, I probably would be pumping up Oklahoma State more than, than me right now. I, I think they're the best team in the Big 12. I think they're really terrific in all phases. Uh, so, obviously, it's going to be a massive, massive challenge for Texas Tech. But uh, I really expect Tech to come out and play somewhat of an inspired football game. I've just, I got a feeling that that's going to happen this week. Uh, and I think it's going to be a blow-for-blow blow sort of a game. And I think it's going to go right down to the wire. And I'm afraid that it's going to be another heartbreak city, yeah. uh, another very close loss. But I think that Tech will definitely cover that spread. Yeah, I mean, I, don't get me wrong. Oklahoma State's won the last nine in a row. They've dominated for almost a decade this this matchup. But the last two seasons, Tech has played them really close. I mean, played them within a touchdown here. And then two years ago, they missed an extra point late or, you know, it probably likely would have gone to overtime. Uh, so I'm going to take – Tech. I think Oklahoma State's going to win the game, like you said, but I think 13 points is a lot. So I'm going to take those points and the Red Raiders there to, like you said, play them close. But hey, my Joe, great stuff from you as always. Thank you all for watching, and until next time.